So today we're going to be addressing two major new Star Wars controversies, one surrounding the Mandalorian and Grogu, and the other, the suburban aesthetic of Skeleton Crew, and why, according to the Expanded Universe, this is actually very accurate. Let's dive in. So we begin with the Mandalorian and Grogu. There is one frame from the new teaser trailer shown at D23, which has gotten fans into a very interesting debate. Given Skeleton Crew is coming up, and we've got a cute Ortolan in that show called Neil, and then factor in the Anzellans are returning to the Mandalorian and Grogu, is Star Wars becoming too cutesy? Between BB-8, Grogu, Neil, Gunji, Nubs, is Star Wars leaning into its cute side a bit too much? I mean, the answer is subjective. It's undeniable modern Lucasfilm is certainly leaning into this aspect of Star Wars, but even if you argue yes, it's too much. That isn't necessarily a bad thing. Star Wars having whimsical and cute aliens doing silly things is ingrained into the franchise's DNA, and I don't see it as an issue unless a character is just simply a MacGuffin, or it substitutes from a good story. From Lucasfilm's perspective, it draws in wider audiences, families, it sells merch, why would they stop? I remember when The Mandalorian first aired, and in that first episode right at the end when Din Djarin with IG-11 discovers the 50-year-old asset and fans were blown away it was a baby Yoda. Back then there were some portions of the fandom echoing concerns that he was just going to be used to simply sell merch and not be important to the story itself. This of course ended up being very wrong. He's a force user who had to make a choice, join his dad out of sentimental reasons, or give up their life to become a Jedi. And now going into the movie, he's going to be a Mandalorian apprentice, one with a greater purpose, especially further down the line. While there were times Grogu was definitely a MacGuffin and he wasn't the focus, his overall story arc and I think what John and Dave want to do with him is so much more profound. Having him be a cute alien, I guess, is a marketing bonus, but it's not everything he's about. And it's also worth mentioning, had George Lucas made this kind of character, he would have leaned in far more into the cutesy side. George Lucas always had children in mind when making Star Wars, and I don't think Star Wars would be the same without it. We've spoken quite a lot about the big debate, should Star Wars always be on the maturity level of Andor, or should it be more catered to a family-friendly approach, leaning into those more juvenile, kid-friendly themes, or a mix of both? Some Star Wars stories are going to be more catered to adults in the audience, but to say, especially as a George Lucas purist, that it's time for Star Wars to give up on the comedy relief and the cute characters kind of defeats the purpose of keeping in line with George's vision. Without the cute, soft, comedic, whimsical stuff that is just for fun sometimes, it's not really Star Wars. And while there is an argument to be made, most of this side of the galaxy far, far away originated with the prequel trilogy, there is tons of it to be found in the originals as well. Goofiness is one of the tropes of Star Wars that is often overlooked. I guess it's about maintaining the proper ratio of cute to serious. I don't know, maybe it's just me. I just don't have a problem with the cutesier side of Star Wars. Ewoks, Jar Jar Binks, Babu Frick, Grogu, R2, even Yoda, some would argue. Even the Bad Batch leaned into some of that and it worked really well. As long as it's not taking away from the story, there is no issue. That's what I'm trying to say. So, in other Mandoverse news, there seems to be a controversy going around surrounding Skeleton Crew. It's the elephant in the room after the trailer. No, not talking about Neil. I'm talking about the setting, the aesthetic of the space suburbs, that the show looks too Earth-like, and I wanted to address this. One of the biggest complaints I've seen is that Star Wars with this upcoming show is not being original enough. And I do understand this perspective, but believe it or not, it's nothing new. In the expanded universe, young adult novels, Galaxy of Fear, there are a couple of settlements which are spoken about which do resemble middle-class suburbia, of an American town. And not to mention, my dear friends, throughout the Star Wars galaxy we've seen Western saloons, 1950s diners, you want a cup of with you? New York City on steroids, and even the aesthetic of a tattoo parlor. It's too early to judge, but it appears as though they are making it quite Star Warsy, and they're really going for the 80s Amblin vibe. It kind of looks like if George Lucas and Spielberg collaborated on a Star Wars project, and in universe, and I'm sorry but once again I'm gonna have to refer to Star Wars Legends, this is actually consistent with the lifestyle of New Republic officers who enjoyed stable middle-class lives. 
According to the X-Wing series of books, some high-ranking New Republic generals, majors, and lieutenant generals, who in the case of Skeleton Crew are the parents of these kids, enjoyed stable salaries and some benefits, especially compared to the chaotic and often harsh conditions of the Rebel Alliance that preceded it. With the establishment of the new government, many officers lived in relative comfort, provided they were stationed in secure areas, and some of these were middle-class suburbia and had access to amenities suggesting a stable way of life, one that would resemble the safety net the kids enjoy. In terms of housing, while stationed on more developed planets or in safer systems, New Republic officers often had decent housing whether provided by the military or rented with their salaries. The living conditions were significantly better than the Spartan and precarious setups of their rebellion days, although they weren't as lavish as Skeleton Crew might suggest. But it was middle class nonetheless, and the higher your status and social standing, the higher your rank, the better your standard of living. And here is what other fans had to say. I love it. If anything, my complaint is that the lighting and some shots feel more like an Abrams film and less like a Spielberg film. Not bad, but wish it felt more late 80s, early 90s. This person says, The biggest reason why I and others don't like the Burbs aesthetic is that it isn't interesting and they haven't done anything in the trailer to make it look more interesting. This looks like it could be any sci-fi show with a suburban setting. Well, like I said in my breakdown, I think as a starting point, that was precisely the goal. These children live in a very secure environment, no danger, their parents are presumably quite wealthy, they work for the New Republic, they don't have to face much adversity, it's pretty mundane, and then suddenly they're thrown into a galaxy of adventure. They're gonna come across terrifying things, conspiracies, mysteries, things they don't understand, things which are gonna connect probably to the Imperial Remnant, maybe Thrawn, pirates, smugglers, but the safe suburb is the starting point. The fact they're doing it for the first time in live action to me is not really an issue. It kind of reminds me of the mod gang discussion. Fans were saying they don't fit the Star Wars aesthetic, which seems to be a very similar criticism in this instance. I think with the mod gang, it was more the fact they shouldn't be on Tatooine, they should be on Coruscant. And with this, it just doesn't feel Star Warsy enough. The school bus, the suburbs, the front lawns being perfectly mowed, Earth-like roads, some guy walking his dog, but it's precisely the contrast of this versus where the show is going, which is why I'm not too worried. And if you think about it, planets like Navarro, or if you want to go a step further, Naboo, were extremely Earth-like. They literally filmed their locations in Italy and Spain, Lake Cuomo, the Royal Palace outside of Naples, and they didn't change much. And I'm not trying to overly defend it, I'm just saying from what we've seen in the trailer, there are enough weird and wonderful sci-fi things to make it Star Wars. Is it conventional? Does it follow a formula of exactly everything we've seen before? No, but that's world building. And why not take this risk? They've been marketing this show for two years as Goonies in Space. Maybe when the show comes out, I will have more criticisms, but right now from the trailer, I think it looks fun. And I think personally for me, I'm gonna have a good time watching this. I'm not entirely thrown out of the Star Wars universe. I think it's the bias that this is Star Wars live action, because we've seen tons of terrestrial, Earth-like vibes in the animated shows. While I do think Star Wars could go a step further to be a bit more daring with its sci-fi environments, a criticism I had for the likes of Obi-Wan Kenobi, I think it works in this case, because it's children of middle-class New Republic officers getting lost in space. The starting point of safety ending up on the complete other side of the galaxy, it's fine and I do believe it's going to be done for dramatic effect. What do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts on everything we spoke about in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, check me out on socials, and may the force be with you, always.